In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a team site. So the first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you're in your email. As you can see, I'm already here. If you're not quite sure how to get to your email, as long as you're in Blue Quill, you can click on the email button and that will take you to your account within a new tab like I've already done here. Alternatively, I can go to mail.franklin.edu and that will also take me to a place where I can log in and access that account. So now that we're back here in our email, the first thing we're going to do is go to this application choosing section. So I'm going to click on that button and it's going to display all of the options in different places I can go. You can see I've got the uh, office applications here and the office 365 online applications here. So to set up a team site, we're going to click on sites. And then from here, you might think you'd be able to click on team site and that's the way you would do it. But actually you don't do it that way. That way will not work. Instead, we're going to go over to the gear, click on that, and then go to site contents. Once the site contents open, opens for you, I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better. Then we're going to click on new subsite. After the new subsite section opens, this is where you're going to set up that new SharePoint team site. So you give it a name, a description, you can give it a unique URL, as well as setting the language, whatever languages are available there, um, as well as choosing what kind of site. And again, in our case, we want to do a team site. That's probably going to give you the right attributes for this particular situation. Now what you'll notice is, you see how it says here personal and then my name? You can't see the whole URL, but it actually is attached to my account. Keep in mind that any sites you set up are actually attached to you um, when you're doing it in this section. So it is really more of a personal site, even though you can share it with others. So let's do an example. I'm going to type in the name. And then if I want to put a description, I can. Then I'll do the URL. Type that in. And then, like I said, I'm going to use Team Site. Now, this is the interesting part, too, is it's going to ask me as I scroll down here, do I want to use the same permissions as the parent site, or do I want unique permissions? In this case, because it's a team site and I want to invite specific people to it, I want to use unique permissions. So I'm going to choose that as my option. From a navigational standpoint, it's also going to ask me what kind of navigation I would like. This is not as critical, but I usually leave it as the default, which is to which is yes on navigation and then no on parent site. Then I'll click create. This sometimes can take a minute. The system has to work on it, and you'll notice up here in the top it says working on it. So you'll think it's going to be immediate, but it actually has to go out to the server, has to set up the site, uh, put the right permissions in place for what you've asked for, and then get it ready. So you can see it's still working on it. And then when it's done, it's going to refresh the page and show you what it looks like. So you have some options. So because of those permissions that we chose, these are the options that we have. So visitors can see you know, be able to see what's in there. They can read the content. Um, you can also see members of the site, what can members do, and then what can owners of the site do. So right now, as you can see, I'm an owner as well as being a member. So I'm able to do everything that's listed here. Visitors can do a little bit less, so if you wanted to invite visitors, you could. Um, so that would be the case where you have a, a team site that you want people to look at, but you don't want them to edit anything. Whereas members would be in this case your team members and if you didn't want your team members really changing the way the site is set up um, you wouldn't necessarily make them owners but you could if you wanted them to set those things up or change them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another person to this um, who is also a member but I'm going to stay the owner so I'm going to type that name in 
And as I type the name, you would think it would probably start to put the name in, but you may not be able to. So I'm going to click on the Check Names button, and that's going to go out to the server, and it's going to take a look at those names and tell me if it can. So it didn't quite have enough to work with. So I'm going to try that again, and you'll find that might be the case sometimes. What you can do is if you get the email addresses from um, the roster, like when you go to email your team members, that's probably going to be the best way to do it. So I'm going to type in the whole email address. So I'll type that in and then I'll check it again. And now it resolves and finds the right name. So again, I recommend you go out to your roster and get those email addresses. Then once I'm all done, I will click OK. And again, it's going to take a second to do that. And once it's set up, I can tell that it's got the name here. This is the, the basics of the navigation. And now I can add extra things. So I can share it with other team members. I can add some checklists to it. I can add some libraries. Um, I can make some other changes to it. Or, in many cases for some of these team sites, you may simply just want to upload documents to it and manage those documents from there. So that's going to be your simplest. So if I go and upload a document, I'll just do one as an example. I'm going to choose files and then just grab something from my desktop. So let's see. At this point, it doesn't really matter what I get, but like I said, in all likelihood, you're going to be grabbing you know, documents and um, PowerPoint files and things like that that you're going to want to share. So I'm going to click on this one and click Open. I can talk about versions, I can add different things, and then I can click OK. And then what that will do is there will be a listing of documents here that my team can use. They might think, well, that's just document sharing and that's pretty simple and you're right it actually is but what if you wanted to do things that were a little more intensive than that adding lists libraries and other apps so I'm going to click on this section and this is really where you're going to add some things that might give you more um, more flexibility or a little more intensity you know with that way you're going to use that so document libraries are a nice thing to add if you want a wiki page like maybe you're all working on a document together and want to have a page there you can do that uh, if you want to have contact information uh, a discussion board discussion board is really uh, nice too if you want to keep that private on your team you can have a list of links for maybe the uh, items that you're using as uh, resources and sources you can put calendars for working on that together um, and then you can see there's 16 pages of apps so there's lots and lots of options so I would say you know take your time go through this you can always remove them if they're not working for you so Again, you might find that to be really, really helpful. I'll tell you what I'll do is I will go and add a discussion board just to show you the example. Click Create. And then what that does is it simply adds that to my site. So to get back there, I'm going to click on Home. It'll just take a minute for it to, to refresh the page for me. And then once that's created, you see I've got a discussion added. I've still got my examples. And then the other thing you can do, too, is if you need to edit this page, you can. See how it says getting started with your site and then remove? If you want to remove this, you can. So I'm going to remove mine because I don't really need it right now. And now I just have a simple news feed, a simple document list, and I have my discussion over here. If I want to edit the page, though, if I really want to get fancy, I can edit the page and change even the way it looks. So that is the basics of setting up a team site, um, uploading a little bit of content, maybe adding some apps to it, um, and then certainly, lastly, of course, um, would be sharing it. If I share it, this is a way to get others to come and look at it. So in a team situation, you may want to share it with your instructor, you may want to share it with your colleagues, you may want to share it with your fellow team members. So being able to do that will be very helpful. And you'll be able to see some additional options where you can send an email invitation, 
uh, as well. So you simply add those names in there. Again, I highly recommend just using email addresses. It seems to work the best rather than using names because you may not be able to find the right person. So if you know those email addresses from the roster, that's going to be your best bet. So in any case, that's how you set up a team site um, and add a little bit of content to it and make sure others can see it.